Hello, Stampers. I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com, coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I am an independent demonstrator in the United States. Today, we're going to be making stencils with dyes. And this is one of my favorite techniques, and it is part of the Totally Techniques Design Team Blog Hop for June. So I am going to turn the camera around, show you how I made a really nice stencil that can be used over and over again. At the end of the video, there's going to be a link right up here. I think it's on this side. It might be on that side. Things are backwards on the camera. Um, there's going to be a link that pops up in one of the two corners up here that's going to take you right over to my blog where you can see still photos, dimensions, all the ingredients that I've used to make my cards, a replay of this video if you need it, and also some little thumbnail pictures that are gonna show other projects made by using stencils from dyes. So make sure you join that blog hop when we get to the end. Hang tight. These are all the supplies that we are going to use for the cards I'm going to make, be making for you today. I chose the Lifetime of Love. This is a beautiful stamp set and matching dies. Lots of great opportunities here. It is a wedding set. This is another little frame that makes beautiful cards. We're going to be using this dandy today. Again, the stamp set, there are nine different images in here. We have some florals, some leaves, and some beautiful fonted sentiments. The dies come with 12 different images. And of course, they cut out the images in the stamp set, but there's also some other fun elements like this. These flowers, this leaf, we have some more leaves over here. Um, some stems to put the flowers on, which is really fun. Okay, let's set this aside. I'm going to be using a Fresh Freesia Pool Party and Memento Black ink today. I've got the Iridescent Faceted Gems. These are so beautiful. I always like to kind of take this and pop this up here so I see what I have left in my package. And as you'll notice, I've got a slit in the side of my package. This just makes it easier for me to pull these out of here and use them and put them back away to keep them safe when I store them. I have the beautiful half inch iridescent um, ribbon and this is actually called the striped trim. I've got a Wink of Stella glitter pen here, my take your pick tool. We're going to use some blending brushes. I've got a small blending brush and a regular size blending brush and it doesn't really matter which ones. I just wanted you to see both of them in use. You can get a pack of small ones, a pack of larger ones. I've got mini glue dots here, multi-purpose liquid do, glue, not do, glue. Of course, my paper snips and my bone folder. So I think the first thing that I want to do is really get into this technique. So I'm just going to push all of these items back out of my way. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do here is I am going to run a piece of basic white through my die cutting machine with this particular frame on it. And I just want to center it nicely. And the size of your um, layer just needs to be bigger than what you're going to stencil on. So that's all I'm looking at here. This is a four by five and a quarter. And um, one of the cards we're gonna make is the same size. The other card is a quarter quarter or an eighth inch smaller. So this should work out just perfect. And when I center this, I'm looking at this part of the frame to here and this part of the frame to here. I'm not looking at this because I want this oval part to be the center focus. And I think maybe I'll pull it down just a touch. There we go. All right, I'll be right back. And here comes our die cut layer. And one thing I forgot to do before I pull this off of here is look on the back. I wanna make sure that this is die cut all the way. And I can clearly see that all these pieces are die cut nicely, but these pieces look like they may not be. So I'm gonna run this through one more time before it moves. Anytime I'm dealing with intricate dies, I always like to turn them over and look at them because um, sometimes you need to run it through more than once to get that clean, crisp, Cut. Okay, so 
this obviously is now just a scrap and I can actually use that for something. So I'm gonna set it aside. I'm not gonna throw this away. That's how we are, right? And then I'm gonna just bonk this, get all those little bits and pieces out of it. You could use your dye brush, but wow, that was really easy, right? And then my take your pick tool comes in really handy to be able to pull this die out of here. You wanna be gentle with it because it is very intricate. Look at how pretty that is. I've only got a couple little pieces left in here and I always like to clean out my dies before I put them away. Okay, this little frame, isn't this so pretty? Now this is a spectacular um, die without doing anything else. You could put this on the front of a card and, and just have a gorgeous card. But we're, we're doing stenciling with dies today. So I am going to bring in my first layer here. I've got my piercing mat and I am just going to set this up on here. This is three and three quarters by five. And I'm gonna bring this in here. And now this is the part where you have to be nice and patient. You wanna get this in here nice and straight. Okay, and I'm gonna make my pool party card first. We're actually doing two different cards here. So I'm going to bring in, I just happened to grab a mini brush. It would be fine to use a big one, but like I said, I just wanted to be able to show both of them to you. Now what we're gonna to have to do here is we're gonna to have to really hang on to this die so that it doesn't move and you have to be patient. This is very delicate, so you don't want to apply a lot of pressure. So I'm loading up my blending brush and then I'm going to let some of that ink come off so I don't have blotches like that and now I'm coming in here very gently and I'm brushing over the die cut and I'm actually going to be blending color onto this whole piece if you wanted to you could just stay right on the die cut layer but I'm going to put color on the whole thing and I'm really holding this down and now you don't want to let it move so be mindful of that I'm just coming in there with that color And I'm just going to continue this way until I have the whole thing covered with color. Kind of bent it a little bit, but that's okay. Just as long as you keep it in place where you're doing your stenciling. I'm done with that side, so not a big deal. Done over there, but one thing that I do want to do is I want to keep this in place and add some more color. Right up in here. And I think I can remove this now. Look at how pretty that is, right? And I'm just gonna come in the middle now and get some color in here. And like I said, this just takes some patience. Don't use too much pressure. And keep your stencil in place. Oh my goodness, what do you think? Isn't that so pretty? Okay, so we're gonna do some more to this, but while we're um, working on this, I am going to bring in another piece of basic white. This is four by five and a quarter. Oh, before I go too much further, how pretty is this too, right? Like that's beautiful. Now we have a pool party frame. 
that's very pale and light and soft and pretty. Now we're gonna bring in this layer. And this is the leftover of this, right? This fits right in here. So now we're going to be bringing in the negative. And these two pieces are the exact same size. And I am going to switch colors here. And I'm going to bring in the Fresh Freesia. And we're gonna make a whole different card. So again, hold this in place. And I'm gonna move this over a little bit. I like to, again, take a little bit of that ink off and start out with a very light touch because I don't want globby ink spots. If you like that look, by all means, don't be gentle. You can come right in and get spots all over the place like that, but I'm going for a very soft look. And again, you have to be gentle with these little bits that are hanging out here. You don't want to bend them over. That does happen sometimes. Just bend them back and then, you know, go more like this instead of the swirl. Don't panic, it's okay. And I just don't wanna let that stencil move on me. You can always put it back in place if that happens, but it's just easier to keep it in its spot. And you can keep doing this and get the color depth that you want. If this is good for you, by all means, you can stop right here if you'd like it to be a little bit darker. I can see that it's very faded right up here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more up there around the edges here. And I always love when you lift this up and see the magic. Ready? Now that looks kind of funny, right? <laughs> but what we're gonna do there is we are gonna take another piece of basic white and we're gonna cut out another one of these. And I'm gonna grab that and do that right now, hang tight. And here comes the other piece. Now I can use this again for another template. This is a scrap. And then we're gonna do my little trick again. <laughs> this helps get a little aggression out too. If you're having like kind of a frustrating day, you can take it out on a die. No harm, no foul. Again, be gentle when you pull these out. Get this out of the way. And I have a few more little pieces to pop out here. And I think that does it. Okay, I'm excited about this one. Um, we're gonna finish up this card first. So one of the things that's a little like, um, a little stressful is I'm gonna stamp my sentiment on the front. And I've done all this work already, right? So now if I get this crooked, I'm not gonna be too happy. So I'm gonna test it out and see how straight it is right here. And that looks really nice and straight. I lined my, I have this on here straight, first of all. And then I lined the bottom of my stamp up with the edge of my piercing mat to see, is my sentiment really straight? So now I'm gonna try and accomplish that on my layer here. And I'm just going looking at this and the bottom of my cardstock to make sure that, oh, you know what? Let's set this on here first and see where does the sentiment need to be on here. And it needs to be up just a little bit. So that's good to know, right? I don't want my flowers to be covering it up. So now I'm gonna look up here. Oh, let's keep our fingers crossed. Oh, that looks great. The first time I made this card, I got it really crooked. <laughs> and as long as we're on a roll here, we're gonna bring in the pool party one and we're gonna stamp that sentiment. And this is perfect because I have a wedding that I'm going to. I'm taking my mom to a wedding in Arizona next month. And so I'll be able to use one of these cards for that wedding and I just love that idea. Okay, whoops. 
Here we go. So we're gonna go back to our Fresh Freesia. And now I'm going to set this back in here. So we have that beautiful Fresh Freesia frame that we've made for this flower. So let's do that. Mm, you know what? I think first I wanna use a little bit of Wink of Stella. And I love these glitter pins. They're so pretty. And I'm just gonna color my flower. I'm not gonna do the middle of the flower because we're gonna put an embellishment on that. And sometimes the embellishments don't stick well to different mediums, right? So I'm just gonna leave that. Oops, I shouldn't have done that leaf, but that's okay. Nobody's gonna know. So I'm just gonna put that on my flowers. Can you see that? Let me see if I can get it up here. That pretty glimmer, that's gonna really look pretty on here. So now I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet and we're going to grab our sponge dauber and a little bit of glue here and I'm going to I kind of like push this around so I don't have a lot of glob globby glue on here I don't want glue to be squishing out all over now the key to using this for glue application is to not let this move you want to keep this in place because if you let it move, you've already got glue all over on your craft sheet and then the front of it's gonna stick in the glue that you have on there. So we wanna keep this as still as possible as we're applying the glue to the back. You see what I mean? There's glue here now and we don't want that glue to get onto the front of our flowers. I'm gonna set this down in here See if I can get this on here. Oh my gosh. Oops, it's a little bit crooked. Hang on. I'm gonna do my flowers first. How about that? Do those flowers first and get that in place and then the rest should lay right down in there where it belongs. Yep, and then you can kind of move this just a touch. Oh my goodness, how pretty is that? Ah, isn't that so pretty? Okay, we've got that one done. Then, where did our other one go? Here it is. <laughs> I'm like, what happened to it? This one, we don't need to um, glue a piece onto it. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to take and we're gonna add some Wink of Stella right to the petals, the colored petals for the flowers. And I think that's just gonna give it a little bit of glitz that's gonna be so pretty. And I know that Wink of Stella can be really hard to see in a camera on a video. So I always try to kind of hold it up and let you be able to enjoy that glimmer. I hope you can see that because it's just, it really adds a lot to the card. And sometimes we don't really see that in a video or even a picture, it's hard to bring that into. But again, I'm just doing the flower portion and the colored pieces of the flower. So look how pretty that is. Okay, I think we are ready to put our cards together. So I am going to bring in a pool party card base. This is four and a quarter by 11. I've already scored it at five and a half. And we're gonna give that a good burnish with our bone folder. Now, this is kind of pretty boring, right? I don't really, that's not, that's not making me really happy. So I thought, why don't we pop that up on a white layer? And then I think that's gonna be much more spectacular. So I'm gonna do that. Add my liquid glue. This white layer, by the way, is four by five and a quarter. And the layer that I stenciled on is three and three quarters by five. Is that right? Three and three quarters by five. And then, yeah. That's not right. <laughs> My white layer is five and a quarter by three and seven eighths because we have that little bit wider border here for our card front. Okay, so I thought this was really pretty, but one other thing that I wanted to do was bring in that beautiful iridescent ribbon. 
This is the iridescent striped ribbon. And I've got my bow jig here, by the way. These bow jigs are nothing more than a piece of wood with some nails in them. You can just drill holes, put your nails in, and this is how I like to make ribbon. And you can, of course, make big ribbons. You can make really little ribbons. You get to decide which size you want. If you're in the United States and you would like one of these, I sell them for $10. It's my cost plus shipping and packaging to get them to you. Um, I just like to do it as a customer service um, option. I don't make any money off of these or anything. They're not sold by Stampin' Up! But I love being able to tie a beautiful bow every single time. And how wonderful is this bow? right? It's just a perfect little bow every single time. So I think I'm going to cut this just a little bit shorter. And I always keep a pair of snips. You see the ribbon on my snips? I always keep a pair that I use for nothing more than ribbon. I don't cut paper with these. I have a paper cutting one that stays super sharp, but you know paper dulls everything. So I keep one set just for my ribbon and that's just a good policy. Okay, take your tick, take your tick, take your pick tool is great for curling up these mini glue dots. I, you'll find me, I use it for all kinds of things. The take your pick tool is like my best little friend. And I'm just going to put that glue dot down there, put this iridescent ribbon in here. Good grief. Super simple, very clean and crisp. I love that look. Now we're gonna grab some of these iridescent faceted gems and I'm gonna put one right in the middle. This is a bigger one, and then I'm gonna grab a smaller one for this little flower. Oh my gosh, absolutely gorgeous, right? Now we need to do something with the inside. So what I came up with, I'm gonna grab another piece of white. This is four by five and a quarter. And I'm gonna stamp the inside sentiment with Memento Black ink. It says, congratulations on your wedding day. And you, of course, could use this on the front or the inside, and you can interchange those two sentiments. But I love that font. I think it's so beautiful. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the other card that we have to finish. So let me grab another piece here. So I'll just put that right in here. Oh, I made edges. See my edges? Dang it. I need to trim this stamp. Have you ever done that? We need to do some surgery on our stamp. Now, because these are sticky labels, I like to put my take your pick tool under and pull up that label so that I don't rip the foam. And then I'm going to grab my non-ribbon scissors. And you want to make sure that your scissors stay straight up and down. You don't want them to angle when you're cutting rubber. But this is going to keep me from getting edges on my projects. And you may need to do it a couple times, you know, like if you see you're still getting edges, cut it off some more. But I do surgery on my stamps all the time, you guys. They're your stamps. You need them to work as wonderfully as they possibly can. Okay, so we have that done. Now I'm going to grab... This little flower from the Lifetime of Love stamp set, and I'm just gonna put this right over here. Oh, isn't that pretty? And then we also need some envelopes, right? So I've got this envelope here, and as long as I'm in the pool party ink, I'm gonna stamp that right there. We're gonna clean this off. We're gonna bring in the Fresh Freesia, and I'm gonna put that right there. And then I'm also going to stamp it on my envelope. Okay, pool party card. Whoops, pool party card almost completed. And the one thing I like about using this technique, making stencils out of dies, is that you look for the dies in a die set that you don't have a matching stamp for because there's no sense in well, I guess stencils would be different, but I always look for um, the die that doesn't have a stamp. Like this particular die 
there's no stamp in here that looks just like this. So that's what I always look for when I'm doing a technique like this. And isn't that so pretty? Now let's finish up that other card. I am going to bring in my four and a quarter by 11 Fresh Freesia layer. And I've scored that at five and a half. So we're gonna take Oops, I put the wrong envelope with the wrong one here. This is our envelope for that. This is our envelope for that. I'm going to take the inside and add it. I really like this color. It's very soft and pretty. Fresh freesia. Kind of a cross between pink and purple. And then I'm going to bring this in here. I didn't add an extra layer under this because this white is four by five and a quarter, whereas the other white was a little smaller. And the whole, um, the whole card front isn't a color, right? It's white. So that made me do something a little different here. And then I have a bow already made for this one. So I'll just grab another glue dot. And I'm going to put that right up here. Here. Oh my goodness. How about some embellishments in there? Of course we need embellishment. It's a wedding card. Embellishments, embellishments, embellishments. There we go. Good grief. So pretty. Isn't that so pretty? We've got that Wink of Stella on those flowers and our matching envelope, right? Let me clear some of this mess out of my way. See how I just do that? <laughs> That's how I roll. And then here comes our other one. So we use that same stencil to do the outline here and we use the negative to do the stenciling here. And then you guys, we still have this piece that we could take and put on a card front and use that to make another card. So I'm definitely gonna hang on to this and be able to make another card out of that. This would also make a beautiful um, card for sympathy, right? You could put a sympathy sentiment in there. So there you go. This is called stenciling with dyes. That's our technique today for the Totally Techniques Design Team Blog Hub. Make sure you click up here to head over to my blog. You're going to find all of the ingredients I used and the little thumbnail pictures of everybody else's projects using this very same technique. If you would like to place an order with me, I always appreciate your orders. This is my current host code and only use that if your order is under $150. Over $150, you get some rewards from Stampin' Up. I definitely want you to have those. And last but not least, we have our new catalog. If you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is kelly at stampabove.com. Put that in the email, send me your address, and ask for the new annual catalog. I would be happy to mail that out to you. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am almost to a new milestone for my YouTube subscribers, and I would love to have your help getting there. Just click on this subscribe right down here. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this video today. If there's anything I can do to help get your creativity to sparkle, you let me know. Bye-bye.